sci-fi and fantasy short stories. Set Lasers to Exorcise by Isabel Yakira You know, the funny thing is that they don't put priests on spaceships. Chaplains, yeah, sometimes. Or non-denominational ministers of some vague Christian mythos. Space, still a smiling, cold, colonist, imperialistic, hegemonic expanse, as if it would ever be anything else. But not priests. The Catholics still weren't popular, even now. Of course, she could only really speak for the Americas and their spacecraft. Perhaps the Eastern European board allowed on deck their orthodox clergy. That is, if you could get them into the black in the first place. Did priests even want to go to space? Was interstellar travel against religion in general? Eh, presumably not, Yari thought morosely. After all, there were demons up here. Huh. Maybe space was hell, she mused. Cold and dark and airless. Something closer to Dante's Ninth Circle than the traditional fire and brimstone of long Midwestern highway billboards. Eh, could be, could be. She crossed her arms and stared down at the body of Captain Colin Cathaway, a really unfortunate case of alliteration. Yari unironically hoped for his promotion out of it soon. Who was shackled to the bed? What do you think? Felicia asked tilted her head to the side like an intelligent bird. She sort of resembled one behind her affectation of round spectacles and the ever-present stethoscope around her neck, like a bright mark of plumage on the breast of an otherwise monotone bird. They had an all-human crew aboard. Had to on these territory governmental licensed crafts. Felicia sort of resembled an acrylis anyway, all magnified eyes and craned neck. Well, doctor? That was the other doctor. Fucking Larry, Yari thought fondly, the psychiatrist. Spaceships don't have priests, but they certainly had shrinks. At least three, so they could analyze each other if they got bored. I would normally term it a psychotic break, Larry said, scratches at his ear, embarrassed. There are, however, the physiological elements. The body of Captain Cathaway stuck out a long, forked tongue, like a peeved, snake-like kindergartener. It must be made clear, for the record, that this was not usual for the captain. All human crew, remember? That make me more inclined to believe the original report that the captain is possessed, Larry finishes, with more aplomb than Yari originally believed he was capable of. Hmm, Felicia said, tapping her stethoscope with an acrylic nail. It made a bright pinging noise in the room. Rather pleasant. You could ask me, the thing inside the captain's body suggested. It had a slight slur to the S's, something Yari severely marked as stereotypical. Too bad movie-esque and therefore to be harshly criticized. The three crew members in the room ignored it. So what? Yari said. Do we just leave it in there till we make landfall on some planet that hopefully ascribes to Catholicism? A pause. Yari wasn't sure that there were any planets in the system that they were currently cruising through that had Abrahamic colonists, let alone Catholics. Well, Felicia said, to be fair, we don't know if it is a Catholic demon. <sighs> there are other types of demons. I believe most cultures originating from Earth Prime have a mythology involving demons, or creatures that are capable of possession. Spirits, Shaitani in Africa, Misaki in Japan, Larry offered. Damn, Yari said, impressed. I didn't know you were interested in this stuff, Larry. He sighed. Yeah, my wife is an amateur occultist, he admitted. We end up watching a lot of documentaries. All right, Felicia said. As one, they turned to the body of the captain. What kind of demon are you? Not telling, said the demon in the captain's body. 
it turned up its nose. This was particularly distressing in the captain's sort of rugged, blandly handsome face. You were just saying we should ask you a moment ago, Yari said, exasperated. And then you ignored me. I'm sorry, Felicia said, with all appearances of sincerity. Are you a Catholic-flavored demon or something else? Why should I tell you? You'll just try and get rid of me, the demon said. A beat. The presumably Catholic demon has a point, Yari said. How far are we from Planetfall? Larry asked. Yari checked her calm, heavy on her wrist and becoming increasingly laden with notifications. Such was the burden of responsibility. She blithely ignored them to look at the map. About two weeks. Supply runs are slow. Ships heavier. Ovida has a pretty large colony, though. Pretty diverse. My Alchemist system. Could call ahead and get a coterie of religious officials ready to meet us on Planetfall. But what do we do about the captain? They turn back and look at the demon, shackled by wrists and ankles with the electromagnetic cuffs that people always assumed you could get out of by shorting them out. Like they'd just fall open for some reason. You couldn't, for the record. It just made them very heavy dead weights. And you were still shackled. We can't leave him shackled here the whole time, Felicia argued. He'll get bed sores, and it's really not good for your joints to be stretched out like this. I could pretend to be mortal, the demon says hopefully. I could be good. Could you? Yari says skeptically. You were freaking people out earlier. What with the... The claws, Larry said. And the levitation, and the blood oozing out of the walls. Oh shit, did we get a private to clean that up yet? Yari said. I told Evans to do it, Felicia said. No, he's a... That's fine. He needs some character building. Those ROTC kids always do, Yari said, and returned her attention to the demon. The point is, you were kind of fucking things up before. I promise, the demon says. I'll swear on it. Well, maybe not on your religious texts, but perhaps you have a handbook of rules? Some sort of bureaucratic text? I mean, we could put regs on a USB or something, Yari said. Pretty sure it's less than five gigs, though, so it'd fit on one of those little sticks. I might have one back in my quarters. Your regulations go into the gigabytes, Leary said. Aren't regulations a text file? <sighs> yeah, Yari said morosely. Why do you have that on hand? Felicia asked. Yari scowled. Captain's a dick about, she made air quotes with her fingers, grooming standards, because my hair... Uh, she paused and looked down at the demon. He can't hear me, can he? Nope, the demon said cheerfully. Excellent, Yari said. Keep that up, cadet, and we'll get you out of those cuffs in no time. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it. Should I get the stick or not? I really don't think it would hold up in a court of law, Felicia said. Well, actually, they let you swear in on anything you want in the court, Larry said. There was a guy who swore into his elected office on the Silmarillion. Listen, the demon interrupted. I swear, space is not really where I want to be either. Well, all right, Felicia said, doubt clear on her face behind her wide, flashing glasses. But listen... You know how easily we got you shackled to this bed before, yeah? So don't act out. I really don't want to deal with the captain whining about losing muscle mass when we get him back out here. In there. Whatever the prepositional case may be. I won't, the demon in the captain's body said. I really do swear. I'll be good and just take medical leave till planet fall. Well, all right, Yari said. Just tell Planetfall. Two weeks later, a rather motley group of higher-ups and officials from the smattering of religions present on Ovida were at the shipyard docks, 
waiting on the Diamond's crew to disembark. Yari walked off first, whistling, her hands in her pockets. She had a sort of bouncing, almost jaunty gait that was typical of spacers who spent long periods in low gravity. Well, one of the uh, priests said, where is the demon? Oh, Captain Yari North, formerly first officer and recently field promoted after the psychotic break and subsequent medical leave of one Colin Cathaway, said, Sorry, yeah, not a demon. We were totally wrong. Lay people, you know. <laughs> what do they know about the Lord, am I right? She spun on one shining boothiel, one of her braids heavily weighted with beads, nearly whacking the clergyman in the face. She waved up the gangplank. Come on now. The former Captain Colin Cathaway stepped gingerly down the walkway, staring up at the bright lights of the shipyard with wide eyes. I am sorry, uh, your... your honors? Yari said, one side of her mouth twitching down. I didn't mean for all of you to come out for nothing. Now, she said in obvious dismissal, talking to the man at her side, Let's get you set up in your apartment, yeah? Honorable discharge is a pretty sweet setup after all. Sure, the captain, former, said obediently, walking past the group of priests. He flashed a forked-tongue smile at them and followed Yari into the mass of humanity that was Earth's Ovida colony. Isabel Yakura is a writer and editor in Brooklyn, New York. She has been featured in Kelp Journal, Apricity Magazine, National Flash Fiction Day Anthology, and other publications. She's currently represented by Haley Casey at CMA Literary and can be found at Isabel Yakura on Twitter. Hey guys, hope you liked that story. For whatever reason, this really reminded me of the movie Event Horizon. Kind of crossed with Dude, Where's Your Car or something like that. I'm not sure what. But it made me smile, and so I hope it got you guys to laugh as well. If you did like it, be sure to leave a thumbs up and a comment if you're on YouTube. Or if you're listening to the podcast version, just be sure to subscribe for more brand new short stories. I'm Chris Heron, and that's it for today's Tall Tale TV.